on a Californian golf course, Mr. Prinderville is getting down to business with entrepreneur David Maxwell. Excellent. Excellent shot, my man. Come on, driver. Let's do this. What you brought me all the way out here for? You know, I'm having an issue with the Lamborghini Huracan. Uh, not a mechanical issue, more of a style issue. Oh, yeah. I'm driving to all these events, shows around the country, and uh, I'm arriving on a stock transport unit that's very dated. It's just not me, man. It's not my style. OK. What are you thinking? Need some aggressive to match the Huracan. Yeah. Want it off-road worthy. Off-road worthy? Off-road wheels, off-road tires. I just want everybody to know when I show up, I'm there and I'm the man. How long have I got? I've got an event of coming in four weeks. Four weeks? Four weeks. I'm going to have to put my A team on that. You got the money? I got the money if you can get it done in four weeks. You got four weeks. It's going to be expensive, though. Hey! Like many supercar owners, this client wants to avoid adding miles to his clock. So he set Prinderville an extraordinary task. Turning a road-bound tow truck into an all-terrain vehicle that can safely transport a precious Lamborghini Huracan. And that's not all. Its look will need to be transformed from boring and practical into a macho monster. This is a job for crack engineering duo Shane and Dan. Hey, boss. What you got for us? Right, listen. I have got one of the world's most interesting people for you to work with. Based in LA, bit of a maverick. Got a Lamborghini Huracan. You sold it to him. Bit of a lemon. Wants to give it back. That ain't a funny joke. Sorry. Yeah. He's given us a unique project. He wants us to build the mother of all car transporters. This guy wants something completely revolutionary in terms of a styling exercise, but it needs to match the style of the Lamborghini Huracan. Outrageous. Spectacular. And he needs to go off-road. This guy takes it all over the place. Now, we're used to building supercars. What, a supercar transporter? One that looks the bomb and can go off-road? Oh, this is our hardest one yet. True that. It's a pretty big build. Yeah. What kind of time are we looking at? How long we got? I'll give you four weeks. <laughs> Bearing in mind, this build is in the States. So you've got to do it stateside. I want the best quality engineering job you can have. This customer will not, in any way, shape or form, have a shoddy job on your way. The Hurricane is a mid-engined 5.2-litre supercar with a top speed of over 200 miles an hour. Famous for its angular, edgy styling, creating a transporter to complement this beast and carry it safely will be no easy feat. Woo! Danny boy. I reckon this could be one of our biggest challenges to date. I mean, take a look at this. The Lamborghini is clearly inspirational, but not for styling a transporter. I mean, come on, they're chalk and cheese. So you've got high-end supercar, and then you've got bulky, ugly transporter. <laughs> That's frightening. Nearly as frightening as the amount of engineering we've got to do. Transporters are designed to go on road. I've never heard of an all-terrain one. And we've got to build one in four weeks? I'm kind of stumped. Me too. But here's what I'm thinking. So Mr. P wants us to build this in America, right? So all we need to do is partner up with a few boys in the US. Now, where do you find them kind of guys? SEMA, Vegas. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. Road trip. <laughs> SEMA is one of the biggest and best automotive trade events in the world. 60,000 buyers from around the globe flock to this speciality showcase to check out the hot new products. Oh, that's beautiful. Look it's at lovely, that. Isn't it? Awesome machines. This is car porn. It's exactly what it is. And meet some of the brightest minds in car building. How you doing, Shane? Nice to see you. 
But the boys can't get distracted by the candy store of custom cars on show. If they're going to build an aggressive looking vehicle that can safely transport a supercar over any terrain, Is that a transporter? they need to focus on these off road monsters for inspiration. In terms of transporters, no, that takes the boxes. It's for nuts. Me. Like it's proper nuts. I, th I think it's awesome, but I don't think our client would rock this. No, I don't think so. I mean, check this thing out, right? <laughs> Just it's an insane build. That's gonna take us. I mean, this that's is a, a long this, time. This build. is a two-year build. That is a next level altogether. As well as picking up style points, Shane and Dan are here to find the right American partner to help them build the unique transporter in just four weeks. But so far, no luck. There's lots of builders here, but I don't think any one of them could actually turn out the amount of work that we're asking for in such a short amount of time. And then the boys spot a well-known face. Victor Sanchez is a world famous mod specialist. Based across the border in Tijuana, Mexico, he's known for pulling off builds in super fast time. We have a build for you that we need help with. So, only tell me I can do everything you know that. We got a client with a high profile car, but well, we need to build a transporter for this supercar. A transporter for a supercar? Yeah. You in? Come on, come on, of course I am. He's never, let, he's never let us down. We came here for inspiration and to hire help. The fact that we got Victor on board is a massive result. Let's hit it. Let's go yeah. straight to Tijuana, Mexico. Here we come. It's cost me a fortune to send these two to SEMA, which I don't mind, as long as they end up teaming up with the right sort of talent. If they muck this up. It's not me they're going to have to worry about. This particular client is a handful. Little does Prinderville know that Shane and Dan have gone rogue. Instead of building in America, they've crossed the border to Tijuana, Mexico, to meet their new partner. Shane and Dan have tasked Victor with sourcing a transporter to form the base of their build. Oh, Victor in. But the unconventional king of customizing is nowhere to be seen. I tell you what, I'm gonna get a bit of sun. <laughs> Mr. P is paying for my tan. No drug. No! Hey! hey. Mis amigos, Shane and Dad. Hello, buddy. Good to see you. Good to see you, man. Hey. What do you think? What do you mean, what do we think? The supercar transporter. Are you serious? We've come a long way to make this happen, and he turns up with this tow truck. It's a long way for crushing disappointment. The tow truck is a Ford F-Series, which has spent 40 years at the top of the American bestseller charts. Since introducing the F1 in 1948, Ford has produced 35 million F-Series trucks and nowadays sells a pickup every single minute of the day. But can this beat-up old F-250 workhorse satisfy the paying client's lust for an off-road transporter fit for his precious Lambo? We can change. We Everything. can make more stylish. Uh, I'm not seeing it. We need a premium vehicle that can load and unload a supercar safely off the back. I'm not even sure that this thing could bring the shop and hope in the supermarket. Like, seriously, come on. Does it work? Does the tilt work? Yeah, of course. Oh. I put the, my wife's car over. Put your wife's car in the back? Yes, of course. Please do. Let me, let's have a look. Let's see. OK. These are British guys, you know, they try to see everything nice and, and cute, and but I think we can make something huge and monster with this ultra. But not everyone shares Victor's enthusiasm. Victor, what are you doing? Look at my car up. 
Me estoy poniendo arriba de la grúa. ¿Estás loco? Baja mi carro. Yo voy en a... En este momento. Ahorita lo bajo. He told me everything's fine. I can take the car for whatever I need. Victor may have faith in this old-timer, but is it really up to the job of safely transporting a supercar over any terrain? We said that it should go off-road, not that it should be off the road, <laughs> condemned. That's pretty much what we've got. Victor! Shane and Dan have just four weeks to complete their most challenging build to date. An off-road vehicle that can safely transport a supercar over even the toughest terrain. No, but we need something that's a little bit more comfortable than this, a little bit more luxurious. The boys have teamed up with Mexican customizing expert Victor Sanchez, right. who's about to demonstrate why he thinks this Ford F-250 tow truck is the perfect vehicle to fulfill this unusual off-roading brief. Is that the last car you towed? <laughs> <laughs> this kind of rocky terrain will show us whether our old truck has the potential to be the reliable and safe supercar transporter that our client's paying for. Keep an eye where you're going. Watch them, watch them rocks. You don't want to do a tire. Oh. You're a madman. Oh. <laughs> He's going out! Oh, we got it lean! <laughs> lean back! Oh, we killed the engine! Hold up. Okay. Quick, quick! <laughs> <laughs> yes! yes! I told you this truck is forever! <laughs> yeah! I told you! You yeah, see? Man. So far, this battered old truck has managed to get us and Victor's wife's car to some pretty rough terrain. But we need to make sure it can go anywhere. So, we're going to push it even further. Go slowly, go slowly. Slowly. Yes. Right. Go. Stuck. We asked him to show us what's it like off-road. He took us off-road, all right. OK. Let's see what happened. Oh, damn, we stuck. Just when I thought that this tow truck was actually going to do the job, no, way too low. Couldn't even get it over this ridge. She's well and truly stuck. Could you imagine if I had precious cargo like a Lamborghini on the back? we just got a lot of loose dirt. It's sand. It's just spinning and spinning. The tires aren't gripping at all. Tires are coming up. Yep. By using the bed, we've managed to lift the tires out of the dirt a little bit. Hopefully, that will give us the clearance that we need so we can get something underneath. <laughs> Okay. Even though this old Ford was never designed to go off-road, Shane and Dan are pleasantly surprised at its performance. This test has definitely shown our truck's limitations. What it also showed, though, is with a bit of clever thinking, it's got the potential to be our client's dream supercar transporter. Now convinced that this is the right donor vehicle for their tricky client... Right then. The boys are back at Victor's workshop and ready to cook up a plan. Step one, we're going to take that awful looking Ford body off. And strip. Strip down. Yeah. And get yeah. rid of this cab. Step two, we need to find a replacement cab. Modern cab. So not retro, old school, so more I, modern, I up think to date. modern. Step three, this is our go anywhere transporter. So we need to address what suspension we're looking at. We need to obviously raise it a little bit for this go-anywhere style. Finally, step four, which is styling. We've got to get this thing to look good. 
Let's finish. <laughs> done. Yeah, done. Come on. <laughs> Let's go. Right, listen, you two. This is the third message I'm leaving for you. I'm going to explain the dynamic here. You work for me, I'm your boss. When I ring you and leave you a voice message, you call me back. I'm paying for the phone bill, I'm paying for the flight, I'm paying for the build. Do yourselves a favour and get down the phone box, put 10p in it, and get down on this phone. We did send him to Vegas, didn't we? Find out what the next flight is. I'm going on to pack my bag. I've had enough of these two. To attempt to transform the battered old F-250 into a go-anywhere transporter fit to piggyback a supercar, the boys will need to change the cab, add air suspension, and try to make this unique vehicle as stylish as a Lamborghini. This is the fun part. This is the strip down. No point messing around. So, with less than four weeks to go, the guys get cracking by completely removing the 250 cab from the chassis. Put some dynamite in the truck, man. Flares. These are flares. I was surprised yesterday how much power this actually has. It's a 6.6 .6 litre. Put your foot down, the power is there. That is how you strip apart a tow truck. With the cab on the deck, Shane and Dan have tasked Victor with sourcing a replacement. I have an idea. You have an idea? OK. So you're going to tell us? No. I come back. Prenderville's client wants the unique transporter to complement his top-of-the-range supercar. So has Victor found the boys an aggressive-looking cab that fits the bill? Shane. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Hey, I told you I have a good idea for this. Hell, yeah. Victor's stroke of macho genius comes in the form of the Hummer H2. This aggressive automatic monster SUV is a civilian version of the Humvee, a military vehicle used in combat since 1989. I love Hummers. I love Hummers too. Hummers are cool. Do you have a supercar on the back of a Hummer transporter? That's just going to look epic. Yes, boss. This uh, is nice. Now, obviously, the Hummer is a lot longer than the cab that we've removed, which means we have to cut the back off it, cut the middle out of it, and then stitch them both together. That's no small task. When it's time to chop it, no? Let's get chopping. For step two, the team need to adapt the Hummer so it can attach to the Ford chassis and form the basis of the go-anywhere supercar transporter. We're starting the uh, strip down of the Hummer. Get it as light as possible so when we make our cut or our chop, it's ready to lift off. Yo, Victor. Yeah. Have you got um, a cutter for the sealant? I need to get this window out so we can cut the back. No. What do you mean, no? Hummer time! <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Guys work through the night. Little do they know that their boss has finally found them and he's due to arrive in the morning. Where is my car? Where's all of my money? And where are my staff? I shouldn't have to come halfway around the world to be able to try and track these two guys down. So to say that I'm displeased is an understatement. What is this place? Dan, Shane, where are you? How's the Craig? All right, boss. 
Didn't right. expect to see you here. Where have you two been? You're supposed to be in America. What is happening here? Where's my truck? Well, this is pretty much, um, this is your build. No, 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 no. All you got is two scrap cars here. We're doing it in a minute. You know, this, I'll leave off. Look, leave, this, no, leave off. This, this, is, this, is, this is a joke. I'm having a freak out. 12 hours for this. It's a Hummer, man. It's a scrap car. It's a scrap car. And that is, is this a bus or someone just left this here? Or what? You I can't be serious, you two. It does look like Mate, that. Mate, this is the last straw. No, seriously, you've turned up at exactly the wrong time. I've been texting you, I've been ringing you, I've been emailing you. I've, I've ended up coming into Tijuana. Mr P is beyond annoyed. He could pull the plug at any minute. He's just got to have a little faith that this project is going to be epic when it's finished. I know it looks like absolute junk at the moment. Oh, but oh this, I can't take it. We have a plan. Look, you know, if you're going to make an omelette, you've got to break some eggs. At the minute, we're breaking eggs. We're going to make an omelette, and it's going to be an awesome transporter. No, I'd never thought in a million years it could get as bad as this. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. Dan, you stay here and tidy up this, this mess of a job. You go and get your bag packed. I want you to go and talk to the client, because between the two of you, you ain't even got a grasp with the fundamentals here. Next time I see this, this needs to be in a better shape. Take me back to LA, mate. Daniel. Later, boss. So, Tony, give us a call, mate. Hey, do it, champion. I'll be back, boys. On Printerville's orders, Shane right. is on a mission to get the measure of the client behind his and Dan's most challenging build to date creating a go-anywhere supercar transporter. Dan is staying behind in Tijuana to oversee step three of the build, installing the air suspension. But with both donor vehicles in pieces, it feels a long way off. What we've got is every part of the Hummer that we don't really need. And what we're left with is a jigsaw puzzle. So we got the front part of the cab, we got some back sections of the cab, and we've now got to try and marry them together to create one cabin that we can then drop on to the chassis. Dan is completely out of his comfort zone. Without his own workshop and tools, he's struggling to work out how to carry out the complex engineering required to stitch the two vehicles together. Before we start welding the back on, I'd like to get the cab in place on the chassis, just to see exactly how it's going to sit and where it's going to sit. Because there's no point doing the work, dropping the cab on, and then finding out that it's not going to work. With no crane to lift the cab into place, the build has come to a standstill. But luckily, Dan and Victor have come up with a rather creative solution. I'm excited to see this cab go on, because that means that the transporter is finally starting to take shape, as opposed to just everything looking like bits of scrap lying around. It will look like one complete vehicle. But this is one of those builds where nothing goes according to plan. The problem is this section of the firewall is going to hit the engine. So we can't actually get the cab all the way down. We can't hang around any longer. We need this cab on today. The firewall separates the engine from the passenger compartment. With time running out, Dan instructs the crew to cut even more of the Hummer so the cab will fit into place. We've cut out the bulkhead. Now we're going to get it lowered down, see if we've cut out enough. Hopefully, we have. Yeah, that's looking good. As far as we've got, we've still got a long way to go. And to be honest, I think Mr. Prinderville has tasked us with something 
whereby we have bitten off more than we can chew. Hey, Mr. Maxwell, Shane Lynch here. I've come to speak to you about his transport that Mr. Pinderville sent me. Okay, I'll buzz you in. Mr. P is not one bit happy. I mean, he tore us a new one out there in Mexico. So he sent me over here to meet the client, to reassure him that this project is all on track. Mr. Maxwell. Shane, nice to meet you, my man. How's the transporter coming? The transporter? It's coming on real good. We're building you a monster. But I kind of need to pick our brains a little bit on the styling exercise. Come on in. Let me show you the car. See if we can nail this thing. Yes, sir. Let's do it. David Maxwell is living the dream. What a house. What a view. This guy's a baller. So when it comes to styling, I need to pick his brain to make sure that we've got everything he wants on his transporter. It's beautiful, man. Absolutely beautiful. But Mr. Prinderville never told me it was orange. You want an orange transporter? No, 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 no. I don't want an orange. I want them to complement each other. I do not want them to match. I know I'm being vague, and I know it's tough. I really just want the transporter to match my car's personality. Everybody should know that they're meant to be together. There's only one way to get to understand the personality. Let's take it for a spin. Take it for a ride. Now that the Hummer cab is finally on the transporter, it's time for stage three of the build, adding monster tires and air suspension so it can tackle any terrain. Oh, oh! Hey, Dan, what's up? Oh, yeah. You see that? For the Hummer. They're nearly as tall as me. When it's something like that for the off-road. I tell you what, these have turned up just in time. Let's get them in. Now, these are massive. I mean, they're 37 inches in diameter. Now, crucially, these things perform three tasks. We've got really knobbly treads on them. So that's great for going off-road. They're massive, which gives us ground clearance that we want. And alloy wheels. They just look awesome. However, there is a Caps 22. The size of these gives us the ground clearance, but it also makes it incredibly hard to load our supercar onto the back of this transporter. And that's where the air suspension comes in. Oh. Dan is planning to use a state-of-the-art system with the ability to lower the truck by 25 centimetres, which they're hoping will be low enough to load up the Lambo. The air suspension system works like a conventional spring, except that we can raise and lower the height of the vehicle just by adding compressed air into these bellows or airbags. On the rear of the vehicle, we're going to be running these huge bellows. These will give us the power that we need to raise that vehicle up, especially when we've got a nylon two-ton supercar on the back of it. Airbags are in place now and everything's bolted together. Next up is literally just connect the airlines, get the compressor in and the pumps. We're good to go. Air ride transporter. Now, one of the many problems that this build throws up is actually getting the car onto the transporter. A normal car, not a problem, but we've got a supercar. The supercars run really, really low to the ground, which creates an issue when the front end hits the ramp because of the angle of the ramp. On its lower setting, the air suspension will help the loading bed hit the ground at a 15-degree angle. 
But by Dan's calculations, that won't be shallow enough to load a Lamborghini. So he's tasked Victor with coming up with a simple solution. Why don't put something like this? Yeah, it looks like a spoiler. When we go down, then it works like a ramp. Supercars have spoilers. Yeah, of course, then. It's a super transporter. The plan is for Dan to fabricate an angled extension to the loading bed that will soften the climb. It's a great idea. <laughs> Works in a simple way. No hinges, no mechanisms that can fail. So all we've got left to do now, fabricate it. While Dan starts to work out the exact angle of the ramp extension, Shane is still in California with the client who wants to see what his 600 horsepower Hurricane can really do by letting it loose with a professional driver at the wheel. Davis took me to a runway to help me to understand the Lamborghini a bit more, to get to know its personality, its emotions, its vibes. Oh. <laughs> if you look at the lines of a Lamborghini, it, they just built it to be angry. Just animal, absolute animal. I mean, the transporter, to, to reflect on something like this, to be able to get them to, to marry, you've got to have something that's going to just be stocky and staunchy and hard looking and, you know what I mean? I've got faith in you guys. Here we go, sir. Like many Lamborghinis, the Hurricane is named after a famous fighting bull. It's also Spanish for hurricane, which is convenient, considering it reaches 60 miles an hour in 3.2 seconds. And competitive driver Shane knows how to handle this angry animal. <laughs> oh, now I know why they pay you to drive, my man. <laughs> I'm gonna need to change my trousers after this. If you can build this truck half as good as you drive, my man, we're there. Oh, yeah? Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've got a good idea what you want from your transporter. I mean, the idea's flown through my mind. I just need to get them back to the garage in Mexico and make this happen. Hold on for a minute. What did you say? Uh, Mexico. Mexico? I love Mexico. You love Mexico? I'm ready to go right now if you are. Yes, sir! Ooh, let's go to Mexico, it, baby. Shane is confident he's got the measure of the car and the client. Time to let Dan know what he's in for. Yo, Danny O. You all right, mate? How's it going? He's a real cool cat, this fella. He wants to pick the transporter up in Mexico. What? <laughs> Seriously? We don't have to get it across the border. No, boss. We're good to go. Did he give you any styling tips? The Lambo's orange. He wants to compliment the Lamborghini to the transporter. OK, cool. When are you going to be here, then? We're leaving now, pretty much, so I'll see you in two days. So while Shane slums it in the Lambo on the long ride to Tijuana... Good place to uh, get away from it all. In Mexico, the client's off-road transporter is finally taking shape. Like a glove. It's starting to look like a Hummer. So it's now time for the fourth and final stage of the build. Styling the super truck into an attention-grabbing, aggressive monster. Starting with a matte black paint job. The client didn't want the transporter to match his hurricane. But we've worked in a flash of orange along the sides so that nobody can be in any doubt that these two vehicles were meant to be together. You don't seem like a particular type of Mr. P client. How do you know him? Bumped into him in uh, Monte Carlo, shooting dice one night. OK. Have uh, similar interests, similar tastes. He's gotten me out of uh, several pinches, if oh, yeah. you will. And uh, I've gotten him out of a few myself. Taxi. As Prinderville makes his way across Tijuana, ready to show the finished product to his VIP client, 
the interiors back in and the paint has dried. There's just time for a quick test of the transporter's new angled spoiler ramp. Let's get this down. Let's see if it's going to work. And the monster build is finally complete. Good job. Now that is awesome. All that's left to do is for the boys to put the client's £160,000 supercar on the back of this beast and see if it can really cut it off-road. It's a beautiful baby monster. I'm going to start calling Victor the milkman, because he always delivers. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, sir. How are you doing? Boss. Daniel. Ah, oh, bud, good yeah. to see you. The boys have chosen this dusty wasteland just outside Tijuana to show David their go-anywhere transporters off-road capabilities. The tough terrain will either make it or break it. This might be the perfect proving ground, but it's a far cry from Prinderville PLC. My company is about prestige. It's about quality. It's about high-end brands. It's not about having a meet out here in the middle of nowhere. This is just not the way to roll the business. If we don't get kidnapped, it'd be an absolute miracle. Where's my transporter? You all right, Victor? Yeah, bring it in, mate. OK. Here she comes. I'm kicking someone's ass if this is not right. You're going to love it. Last time I saw this project, I blew a fuse. If these two Muppets have not completely transformed this car, there is murder in Mexico. Check that out. Four weeks ago, this was a dilapidated road-bound tow truck with a boring, bog-standard cab, peeling paintwork, stock wheels, and absolutely no style. But now, it's been transformed into a macho, kick-ass, go-anywhere transporter, fit for the young entrepreneur who wants to make a statement? Your off-road supercar transporter. That's what I'm talking about. With its aggressive Hummer cab, this luxury vehicle's off-roading capabilities have been maximized with the addition of monster tires and go-anywhere air suspension. And it's had a styling overhaul, giving this transporter a sleek look that complements the design and colour of David's Lamborghini Huracan. Hey, what's up, amigos? Victorious! Who's this guy? Don't ask, you don't want to know. Gentlemen, I'm very impressed. Only one thing left to do, see if you can put your money where your mouth is, load this Lambo up on the back and take it for a spin. OK, let's load it up then. Load up, sir. Too. He loves it. I love it. Even Mr. P loves it. It's not over yet. We still have to test it out. And this time, it's not Victor's wife's car on the back. This is a 160,000-pound Lamborghini. <laughs> no joke. The first big test for the boys' transporter is seeing whether Dan's angled ramp extension is low enough to safely load David's precious hurricane. Great, stay in there. Stay in there, go on, go on. Go on, 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 Land it at the front. That looks awesome. This was the closest one yet. Yes, sir. With the supercar on the back, it's the moment of truth for this unique off-road transporter. At the start of the build, this vehicle failed its first off-road test, but Shane and Dan knew it had potential. Now it's got to traverse some even tougher terrain. Have the boys done enough to make it a true go-anywhere vehicle? All right, mate, let's test this thing out. We are gonna go right in there, boss. Oh, man, hold up, man. That looks awesome. But you're still on the back. Man, I hope I didn't make a mistake with this one, man. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh. Man, have you guys even tested this thing yet? This is its first outing. Uh, slow down, slow down, slow down. <laughs> oh. Looking good. Gaining confidence, but this is a sketchy ride. Look, open the yeah. back, 
Let me tell you something, it's early days yet. Let's not get carried away. The transporter is making light work of the smaller obstacles. But this beast needs to go anywhere. So it's time to take on the big boys. He's not going through the water, is he? Don't go through the yeah, water. Go round yeah, it. Go yeah, round yeah. it. Don't go through. Oh, this 160,000 pounds on the back. This is a go anywhere transporter bus. And we're definitely going everywhere. The Lambo does never have to be left at home again. Man, I'm shocked. I didn't think you guys could pull it off. I've never seen anybody with a rig like this that can perform like this. Proper suspension, proper off-road capabilities, match my style cues, match my Lambo. The whole team did a bang-up job. I couldn't be more impressed, and I'm not an easy man to please. Thank you, sir. I've driven some pretty crazy vehicles in my time, but that was absolutely insane. I mean, this truck was bouncing over every lump, bump, and hill we could push it through. The Lambo, all the way down, slamming around, but never went anywhere. She was still on the back. David was happy. Ole! <laughs> that was awesome. Well, Mr. P. Nailed it. All the requirements I needed off-road, style, you met them all. Listen, mate, when I told you, when you want a mad build, come and see me. I cannot, cannot emphasize enough how much I am pleased with your work, and I'm taking it home with me. Woo! The truck looks awesome. It performs brilliantly. David is happy. And that means that Mr. P has got to be happy. But. You never can tell. Right, boys, I don't know how you did it, but you managed to get away with it this time. Yes, we did, sir. My mate Vince over here, done a good job. It's Victor. Here we go, Mr. Prenderville. Back to London. Can I come? I am here. <laughs> 